what do we need to do with implementation? Well, there's some barriers. Um, let me just hit the hide button or you're going to go crazy. Um, there's lots of things that we have to worry about. Uh, cost, burden, data quality. Biggest challenge is actually getting agencies and researchers to use a different approach. As you know, changing human behavior is uh, in many ways a bigger challenge than, uh, than the technical issues. One of the biggest issues is how we're going to do data documentation. So how many of you, when you're working, you know, love writing and documenting code? How many of you know you ought to do it, just like you ought to re eat your broccoli, right? Um, so, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and build a community that is going to provide us information about who's worked with data, what results they've found, um, what methods they've used, and try and incentivize them to provide little snippets of code that can build part of that data infrastructure. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So here's, here's the approach that we built. Um, and essentially, you're dealing with confidential data on human beings, because I'm using your, your WC record, your unemployment insurance state records, your lots of confidential information. We want to be sure that it's uh, there. So uh, we're going to be operating within a secure environment. Um, and what we're doing, we're using training classes. And part of uh, the other thing is uh, building data science classes around working with confidential microdata for government agencies. And so the data user has a lot of knowledge about you know, what variable v56 underscore 7 was or what that. So trying to uh, get that information uh, extracted from individuals and feed that metadata back to both the data producer and the data steward. Um, one of our core collaborators on this is um, Brian Granger and uh, Fernando Perez from uh, Jupiter. So I'll talk about that a bit in a minute as well. Um, so just to, we've got several things that we're doing in. What I'm talking about now is building that knowledge infrastructure. So how are we going to do that? We've worked with a bunch of government agencies over the past year and a half. Uh, and essentially, um, what we're going to, what we've been building is a, a structure in which we try and get the tacit knowledge from those government agencies about the data uh, into, um, in, into the knowledge infrastructure. So how, how are we going to do that? So it turns out the, the biggest challenge is when I land on a data set, there's very little information other than the data dictionary that was provided. There's very little information about who else has worked with the data. So I've spent a lot of my career looking at wage records and tax records. If I want to, if someone asks me um, who else has worked on this, I kind of go into my mental Rolodex and I say so and so and so and so and so and so. What I'd like to do is to build an Amazon.com where the people who've been working on, I can find out who else has been working on the data, what topics they've worked on, what methods they've used, and provide that information to the people on the data set. And then, like Amazon.com, because I feel like there's a community around it, oh, could you contribute a little review? Could you contribute a couple of lines of code to help people out? Or could you contribute your Jupyter notebook right? that can be reused for the purposes of reproducibility and replicability? But I need to start it. I need to know, so I need to, they're not going to do it out of the blue. So right now, if I want to find out a data set, I go on to Google Scholar, or I go on to NBR, or I go on to ICPSR, and I might type something in. But I'm only going to be able to pull up information if it's something in the title. So what I'd really like to do is to get, build up something like GitHub, or TripAdvisor, or Amazon.com, right? So, you know, coming in, they know who you are, here's the work that you've done, uh, and build that kind of information. So, um, 
in essence, instead of the metadata documentation being built by the agencies, being built by us. So here's an example of um, the interactions in, in the classes that we run where they're dealing with confidential microdata and, it's the, and you've got the data producer and the data user in the class together. So here's someone working in the class, uh, working corrections data. And they say, what do the following indicate in reality? A person admitted the first time has no previous, this, this variable's junk. So normally, I'm never going to be able to figure out why that variable's junk, but because I've got someone in the class who knows something about it, they say it's mainly bad data. He's the CIO at corrections. And then someone else comes in and says, oh, here's some information. Here's some code that I've written. This is obviously on Slack. Um, someone else comes in and says, why don't you try working with that subsample? You're getting that Amazon.com engagement and, and review and um, Stack Overflow and GitHub. This computer scientists are actually doing this better than, than social scientists. And then someone else uploads uh, a, a, a publication or a, or a working paper that has to do with that. So how are we going to do it? So the approach that we took is there's actually lots of knowledge that is embedded in publications. Problem is there's 60 million of them. Right? So what we'd like to do is we'd like to take a corpus and metadata, run a competition and say, can you guys uh, take a set of documents and tell me what data set is in that document? Right? Can you, from the semantic context, tell me what's there and what the data set is? Right? And by the way, while you're at it, since you're thinking about these things, can you figure out what the fields and the methods and tools are? And can you tell me other document, other data sets that are in there? Because it'd be really useful for us if you could tell me other data sets that were in there, because then you could say, hey, uh, Daniel, nice to see you. Here are other data sets that have been used uh, associated with that. And then let's figure out, so my key here is automation, right? Rather than human beings telling me this all the time, what I'd like to do is figure out the model and get people to curate the information and automate it so I can apply it to 60 million publications. And then rinse and repeat. So if you like, measurement and automation. So that's why I'm talking about the industrial revolution for, for data. Um, so, and, and then the basic idea here this is a, not a very uh, beautiful picture, but it gets kind of the point across. So if you think about how people work together, they work on projects. You've got individuals, and I've got information about those individuals. And then for a data set, I've got the data that is provided by the data provider. But I also can add in annotations, like the Department of Corrections woman saying, this variable sucks. So instead of um, the VEC having to answer 30 times a year, that, date, that variable sucks. That annotation gets fed in. And then everyone who starts to work with it says, knows that variable sucks and doesn't do bad analysis. The concern was bad documentation, bad analysis. But it's part of the workflow. It's not like metadata documentation that you have to do or code writing that you have to do. It's part of the workflow. And there's a lot of information in the publications that are written around that. Let's feed that in as well. Okay? So that's what we did. The first step was let's, let's identify a tag corpus. So it turns out the largest social science data repository in the world is uh, ICPSR, the Intra-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. There are three women who every day read publications and then they say, oh, there's one that's in our corpus. And then they curate it and they put it on the website so that you can see who has used this. So um, there is a tagged corpus. It'd be nice to automate that, wouldn't it? That's what we want to do. Instead of having human beings doing this, we want to automate it. And their corpus is only for survey data. What we'd really like to do is to do it for the people who are using tax data or administrative records or you know, using social media data, Twitter or LinkedIn or cell phone data. 
right? So, so that, that's where we want to build the knowledge infrastructure. So we're going to pull that, but that's going to be where we start. So we're going to create usable tags. We're going to uh, create a tagged corpus that can serve as both the training and the holdout data set. And you know, what's going to happen there is it's going to point to the data. If you were to read it, you'd be able to see here's the data set that's being identified. And then we're going to run the competition. And so we're going to send it to all of our friends and family. And uh, uh, thank goodness you guys submitted. We're delighted that you did. Was it Marty Hurst that uh, got in touch with that? Anyway, we sent it to, I don't know how you found out, but anyway, we sent Ophia and Rai sent it to everyone they knew. Um, and we, it, then we held our breath. And there's nothing worse <laughs> than having designed this whole competition and then you're wondering if people are going to submit. But anyway, we did. We had 20 people submit. Um, from eight countries, and um, we have four finalists. Uh, you guys are, are one of the four finalists. And in phase two, what we're doing is kind of a Wild West corpus. But let me show you what this has enabled us to do. So now I'm going to hold my breath to see whether this live thing is going to work. So what we're able to do here is we're able to take an existing corpus an existing um, set of information that digital science, which does fix share and um, so what we're able to do is we're able to take the rich context data sets that would that have been generated. Because we know the publication and we know the data set, what we're able to do, we're able to bolt in the data sets into this existing thing. So now what you're able to do, you see, is if I want to find out, remember the example I had before was the PSID, now I can find, um, instead of just having to go onto one side, I can now pull in.